trophy sheep were hunting the magical mouflon of Hungary. Crow's on a major pigeon day and he's trying out a new cartridge. We have news, we have hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. We're in Hungary for Mouflon, big Mouflon, trophy Mouflon, but it isn't going to be easy. Paul is on a reconnaissance mission as part of Childerlysporting.co.uk, his outfitting business, to see what hunting opportunities exist over here. Welcome to sunny Hungary. We're uh, over here for a couple of days. We've got a group of guys come across to do some high seat uh, hunting. And myself, I've come out as well to uh, test out a bit of uh, mouflon stalking. Got guys out here I know, uh, it's like an outfitter. And uh, I wanted to come out and try, just try it out first of all. When you come across the different country hunting, you obviously look at the weather. Last week there was, I think it was minus 20 here. Uh, this week's a little bit warmer, but we got the snow, which is absolutely fabulous to hunt in for looks and for photographs, but for actually getting close to animals is so, so tricky because you know, they can hear you coming miles away. So it's going to be a difficult hunt and we're, we're going to put our stalking skills to the test on this one, I think. To start with, our guide Arkosh has suggested he show us some examples of the animals on his ground. For this, we're going to be in a high seat. There is a salt lick in this part of the estate and the herd regularly passes through to a feed station. The weather has been brutal, so supplementary feeding is part of the management plan. Slowly, they emerge from the wood to the open ground. There are some impressive rams in the group. Paul has been offered a trophy of 75 to 80 centimetres. They do grow to more than 90 centimetres, but that is big. How many do you take off your area a year? Males? Uh, 20, 25 yeah. males per year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a magnificent looking animal, isn't it, yeah. for, a, for a trophy, mate? Yeah, I, I think uh, this is the, the, the best looking uh, prepared trophy yeah. on the wall. Yeah, so. yeah it does look, look very grand on the wall. Yeah. Do you get many fatalities, many injuries from, the, from them when they're fighting, when they're butting? Yes. Uh, Knockouts? They, yes, they do. It's fatal when uh, uh, three or four fighting together. Sometimes it happens that uh, three rams uh, oh. hits one ram. Oh, I see, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. In a group, and, and, yeah. and then, then they can be hurt. What ages are the first two? The first, I think it's about four or five year old. Yeah. The second one is about seven, about seven yeah, years. Yeah, seven old. years, yeah, yeah, yeah. The first one is about uh, 75. Yeah. And uh, the second one is about 80, 85. Yeah. What's the biggest one you've had here? You've had some... Uh, 95. 95, yeah. 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 That's, that's serious. That's come, coming right up and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, quite wide. Yeah. And, and had a big uh, curve. So it was only by his eyes. Yeah. But it was so wide. What? Yeah. That, that it was uh, 95 centimeters. Yeah. As this series is stalking success and not high seat success, we let them walk on by and the following morning we are off on foot. So I've got my AK-85 rifle over, 308 calibre. Um, it's a heavy valve environment with a set trigger. It's the same rifle I used up on the, uh, well up in Scotland on the uh, goat. Um, I've changed the optics on top, I've taken off the Conquest DL and I've put on the uh, V8. 3.8 for 35 for 60. Good light gathering and uh, good for a bit longer distance shooting as well. So, perfect setup for this, for this sort of day. Also, the sake is quite nice. We'll let the silencer on. Um, makes it a nice, short, compact rifle. Um, you can't hunt with a silencer in Hungary. So, had to take it off, re zero. 
check we're all on and uh, should be in business. As you hear, we're just trying to walk up this road now. It's like, you know, unbelievably noisy. So I think all the, every single animal run out of the end of the forest. So. <laughs> in a minute, I'll start crawling, so it'll be all right. <laughs> it's going to be really tough. The snow is crisp, not soft, and we are loud. However, within the first 15 minutes, a suitable animal presents itself over the ridge. We can't believe our luck. But it's a weird feeling, possibly shared by other hunters. We question whether we have earned it. We have three more outings planned, but here's a chance. The decision is made for us and the herd spooks and are off. I just wanted to get a further forward a little bit to get onto the side of a tree. And uh, yeah, just a crunch of the snow, poof, straight away. And then just whack straight into a big group and up onto the ridge. So now we're going to plan to go up this track around the top of them and try and ambush them from the top. But I think we'll be pushing it today because it's, it's good. It's snow, snow and fog. So another great uh, hunting conditions to go out and hunting in. <laughs> We head off in pursuit, but not surprisingly seem to be bouncing the mouflon from one hilltop to another. We've worked hard, but no kebab. Okay. Day two and the fog and snow come and go. This time Paul tests his shooting clothing, his mindle footwear and his general resilience by standing in wait. An hour and a half later and with just one bleat in the distance and blue lips, we have to take the party to the sheep. Incredibly, this time we get to within 50 metres. Our cover is blown by a lamb on the fringes of the group. We freeze, literally, hoping it'll graze on. 25 minutes later, and we've been outstared. We know we've been rumbled, but Akos picks up the pace and races to a passing point which we can reach before they do. The mouflon herd cuts across further away than we'd thought and there's no shot. It's been a fun but frustrating few days. Paul knows what's here and how difficult the stalking in snow can be. For more information about Paul's Seiko Zeiss V8 scope or Shooter King clothing and prototype rucksack, refer to the description below. For hunting opportunities with Paul, go to childerlysporting.co.uk. Thank you, Paul, and Hungary really is one of Europe's top hunting locations. Now for a man who thinks he is more wolf than sheep, it's David with the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. The RSPB is in a new pickle over a hen harrier. The charity announced in 2016 that the bird it called Highlander had undoubtedly been killed by a gamekeeper in order to protect grouse stocks. Imagine its embarrassment when Highlander reappeared this week with a broken transmitter on its back. Gun makers are moving into the optics market. Two European gun makers launched a range of new optics at German gun show Jagd und Hund. Browning Europe has brought out its kite range of rifle scopes and binoculars, priced in the mid-market at up to €1,000 for 8x42 binos. Meanwhile, the Blaser series of Primus binoculars aims to go head-to-head -head with optics from Zeiss, Leica and Swarovski. Blaser's 8x42 binos are priced at more than twice the kite. 
Completing a trio of launches at the hunting fair, there's a new rifle launch from Kriegoff. The Max Hunt signature range is out, complete with GRS stock. And we have more from Yachtin Hund at the end of tonight's show. If you see someone out lamping in County Kerry in Ireland, the Gardaí would like you to let them know. The Irish Constabulary says that those generally trying to catch rabbits have nothing to fear from a police approach. They came up with the initiative following a meeting between Gardaí and farmers concerned about interference with fencing and livestock and official hair coursing representatives. Police say lamping provides an excuse for people to trespass. Feral hogs will spread to all parts of the USA, according to a new report. Researchers at the USDA's National Wildlife Research Center says that large portions of the USA are at immediate risk of invasion. There are currently five to six million wild pigs across at least 35 states. And finally, what damage can a fox do in a chicken coop? Spanish shooting website Cartuchos and Musa recently posted this CCTV video. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts, and see you at the British Shooting Show. Thank you, David. Next up, it's February, the traditional month for hitting pigeons, and Andy Crow is on the case. <laughs> One door closes, another door opens. The game season has just finished and Crow is back on the pigeons while doing some secret squirrel field testing. Today it's Operation Mass Attack. All the local farmers are out on their rape fields. There are more than 100 acres in every direction to protect, so the fields they aren't shooting on are being made uncomfortable by bangers. So all is good, or is it? Despite the planning, Crow is not happy with the weatherman. I've, look, I've looked on uh, looked at the weather, they said it was going to be dry today, it's raining. It was actually chucking it down earlier so we, we sat it out a bit, um, but it eased off a little bit so we decided to bite the bullet and get going. Everyone else, no one else has set up yet, they're just doing the same as us, really just sitting about waiting for the rain to stop. But, but I want to be set up so that when everyone starts shooting, we're up and ready to go. I've got plus one here today um, uh, to help me out. He hadn't had a day for a while, so he's here today, so I want to have a set of decoys out that side and a set of decoys out this side. The decoy setup is a bit different today. At this time of year, the pigeons tend to feed in a different way to summer and to autumn. Higher numbers will gather on one area. I'm putting them a bit tight this time. We shot this hide about four, three, four weeks ago and uh, they've still been feeding here, but every time we go, they, they tend to go on the, the rape next door because I've been doing pheasants and everything between. So. I haven't been about when they've been about, so as soon as they shoot they come over onto my rope and as soon as I come on a Sunday they go on their rope, so it hasn't worked too well. So, quite looking forward to it, just to show them about the weather really. Um, I'm glad I do my job better than the weather people do theirs, because uh, I'll be out of a job I think. The unexpected weather is keeping Crow on his toes. The decoys need careful management throughout the day. As you can see you've got the rain on here, and as, the day goes, as, as it goes on it starts to dry, they turn black and They'll be too dark, so. but as soon as we start shooting through a few fresh ones, we take these off, take these off and uh, put fresh ones on there, look a lot better. I just wish it was rain to go away, really. but I'm a fine weather shooter. No, I'm not. The hides are set up and we're just about ready to go. Gary is set up by Crow in the hot spot, but there's a chance of trench foot. Well, apart from the water in the ditch, it's, it's, a, it's a nice hide. Yeah, that makes a big difference as well, having a good hide. It really does. You know, if your hide's not right, then uh, you're, you're, you're at a bit of a disadvantage straight away. That's a lovely hide. As I say, a bit, a bit of shame about the foot bath. <laughs> there are big packs of pigeons flying over, but Crow is leaving them to pass, as shooting at a single bird is a false economy. He's playing the long game as they're dropping over into the next field. However, that could prove costly right now as the weather sends a small number of pigeons straight over. Oh, it's a bit slow, but as you can see by when we started filming what it's like now, it is brightening up. Um, hopefully things will start moving. They've been feeding here, so if everyone sti sticks it out, 
and stays on the fields and they sh sort of haven't got nowhere to get in, we, we should be quids in. The communication in the hides isn't going to plan either. There is some tension over whose bird is whose. Yeah, you, went, you went for the close one. I told you to go for the further one. Did I tell you to go for the further one or did I tell you to go for the further one? If, you, if you'd gone for the further one, the close one would have been easier for me. And I thought, well, he ain't going to get that. Something Crow has been keeping close to his chest is that he is field testing some new shells that he's developing with Game Boar. It's all terribly top secret. We're trying out some uh, new cartridges today. Um, I've changed their uh, velocities and that on some cartridges. I've been working with uh, Game Boar um, for a few weeks now. They sent me some down to test out and, well, well and we've got some more birds coming. As always, Crow's mind is elsewhere, and the explanation is put on hold as the birds start to come. But you can see from that long shot, the shells are shaping up well. They're working for Gary, too. Brilliant, I'm over the moon. I've had some cracking shots today. Really have. These new cartridges at hand, he's got a, they're awesome. Absolutely awesome. I mean, they're so consistent. And now that the bird rush has finished, Crow can explain what's so special about these cartridges. There even may be a certain someone featuring on the box. Look at that! Happy with that one, Andy. I was happy with that one. Um, we've, we've been killing some stonkers today. We're testing out some, uh, some new cartridges. Um, this is them here. Game Boy sent me some down to test out. Oh man, have we shot some stonkers today. Just told them I wanted something a little bit faster. Um, a little bit more punch and they've definitely got it. They've changed the pressures. And uh, well, quite some of the stuff here. We, it wasn't all, all plain sailing. It was a bit tough at the beginning. They were a little bit faster than what I've been used to. And some of the stuff we shot, we've looked at each other and surprised ourselves really. You, you shoot at one and then shoot a bit further and just getting out there. It's like that one, Gary. Gary missed it and I nailed it right out across the field. And it was. It... Like that one. He got that one. And that, that was quite a nice shot. But just watch this space, I think it's a case of. And we'll see where we go. Although the day has not been as fruitful as he hoped, Crow has been happy with how his testing has gone. No, I think we got between 50 and 60, I think we got. Um, but they've been 50 or 60 good, good birds, we had one or two decoyed, but, but most of what we've shot have been coming over top, coming through or flying past. So nothing's really been committed today, so it's been, a, it's been a hard day, but it's been a good day. I've achieved what I wanted to achieve, and that's testing these cartridges, and they've gone really well. So an exciting year ahead, and when we know something, you'll know something. From the arable land of Kent to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is now Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Former Telegraph environment correspondent Louise Gray is pounding the publicity pathway still. Her excellent book, The Ethical Carnivore, gets her a first taste of wildfowling with the help of Basque and the Fenland Wildfowlers Association. With the game season over in the Northern Hemisphere, YouTube is starting to build up a good stock of fox shooting videos. With some lambing over and some still to come, John from Hunting COC has two dog foxes down in this film. Meanwhile, Growing Deer TV is out in freezing Dakota temperatures after coyotes. Here are a couple of different types of coyote hunts, plus tips on effective predator trapping. There are still films to come out from some of the big days of the 2016-2017 season. Juan de Dios Bonilla is enjoying a Monteria in La Vaquera Atahares, a hunting estate in Spain, home to red deer, wild boar and mouflon. Vilt Jäger from Germany and the US is also in Spain. Ivan Edie is after an ibex just as the worst storm in 65 years hits the Spanish coast and drives everything down the hill. This is a spot and stalk special with a nice section on on a mule deer buck hunt. Back across the Atlantic to Scandinavia, Elias Alm is stalking fallow. The action takes place first and then there is some chat in Swedish. And finally, to the other side of the world, how to catch a rattlesnake by Andrew Uckles, typically bare-handed. Try to stay alive, Andrew. That's it for this week. Links are in the description if you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight. Send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Out on our channel this week, it's Clay Sports TV. 
Andy Crow tries out shooting in complete darkness at Dartford. It's a Saturday night unlit clay competition. Meanwhile, champion shot Josh Bridges explains how to shoot birds from the high tower and why he loves his browning. Click on the link on the screen to watch it. So there you have it, Kent and Hungary. What a smorgasbord for this week. If you haven't done so already, please go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, you can subscribe to us on YouTube, or you can register on our register page for our email newsletter. Just fill out the constant contact box and you'll get news about our programme, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye. <laughs>